Welcome to the Authentic Life Connection Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Lusk. I'm a master certified life coach, author, personal trainer, and nutrition specialist. For over a decade, I've been helping people with their dreams and goals for their life and health. I spent many years watching people get frustrated with their journey in life and giving up on taking actions towards their goals. So I dug in deep to find answers to why so many of us face this same frustration and struggle in life. So in this podcast, we're going to dive in deep on topics surrounding what it means to consistently live a fulfilling and authentic life, where you are unstoppable in taking action towards your dreams and goals. So the only question is, are you ready to start living your most authentic and fulfilling life once and for all? Then let's get started, shall we? Hey everyone, welcome back to the podcast. For those of you listening in for the first time, welcome, welcome. You picked a fascinating episode to listen in on, as usual. Um, This week we're going to be a little bit more direct than I think I normally am in the podcast. I'm trying a a slightly different style here with, with my podcast and hopefully also maybe breaking the topics up a bit more for you guys, but also in a way, um, making the the podcast a bit shorter, a little bit more digestible for you guys. So today I want to talk about something that I think is super important for my listeners because if you are listening to this podcast, it's because you have dreams and goals. You have a desire to do something with your life that's different than what you're currently doing with it. And that's what I want to talk about today is the whole entire point of setting goals And what I see being a huge problem with people when it comes to setting goals and then getting out there and going after them. And one of the big problems that I see when it comes to setting these goals and then going out there and taking the action to achieve a result is this desire to rush, this this desire to speed through the process and hurry up and get to a result. And that's that's what I want to talk about today. Because I know that we live in a world where that, that glorifies the hustle, that glorifies the people that stay up all night and don't sleep, that glorifies the people that, you know, don't take time to take care of themselves because they're busy out there, hustle, 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 trying to get to a result. And I want to say that I don't agree with this method. Not only do I not agree with it, I think it's not what we're designed for and it's not what I teach to my clients because there is another way. And what I see with the people that speed through the process to get to results is that at the end, they feel unfulfilled, they feel exhausted, they get burnt out, and they end up putting themselves into corners where they're resentful about their life because they were just, they're always rushing to get to a result, hoping to feel something about themselves that they never feel. So what I want to say about this, this whole entire thing, is that this desire to rush, this desire to speed to a result, this is a conditional worth issue. And when we start a goal with conditional worth issues, it is bound to bring us to a place where we are suffering, we are not feeling fulfilled, and we we feel disempowered in our life. We feel like we are a victim in our own life and like we have to do things, we have to hustle, we have to hurry. So I want to explain how this is an issue of conditional worth today, but I also want to explain why this rush, this urge to hurry up and get there is tied to your story about even what is the point of setting goals. And this story is also likely the reason not only why you're rushing to try and get to a result, but why you keep giving up on your goals. So there are two main sides to this issue here that I want to to briefly begin to address today. So we're talking about setting these goals for ourselves based on our truest desires and dreams and then creating unstoppable action towards them. And why most of you are giving up on that unstoppable action part is that most of you are choosing to fail by giving up on the goal after you have set it and you've tried this one one how-to method and it didn't get the results you want, so you give up. You choose to fail. So like I said, there are two sides to this issue, and I'm wanting to address these here. And I also want to address how each of these sides lands back on an issue about conditional worth that we see with ourselves. So the first side to this is this one here. And it doesn't have to do with actually giving up on your goals, but it has to do with actually giving up on your goals. Let me explain here. So the first side is that I see a lot of you out there and you don't allow yourself to see your true worth and potential. And so you set goals 
that you know how to reach and how to reach quickly. You already know the how to do it. And this sounds so logical and reasonable in our current goal setting and achievement driven culture. But I'm here to tell you this isn't how we are designed to work. This isn't how we create an authentic and fulfilling life. Okay? The problem here is that you all never let yourself explore your full potential or what would truly be possible for you if you let yourself be stretched to grow and evolve. And so what I mean by this is you are giving up on your goals because you're not even setting them. You're setting little things that you know you can achieve based on what you already know and what you're comfortable with and not setting a goal that's going to be a true goal, a true desire for growth and involvement and stretching and finding your potential in life. So you what you end up doing is you put these invisible self-induced limitations on what you're capable of, and then you coast through life believing that these limitations are facts that are out of your control. And this is a conditional worth issue. If you find yourself doing this, at the core of this is the issue of conditional worth. And you can do this for the rest of your life if you want to. I'm not trying to tell you that you can't do it. I'm not even trying to tell you that you shouldn't do it. But I know that even even though you numb yourself out every day and distract yourself from the feeling of, of this, if you take a minute to honestly assess here and feel what you truly feel about your life and the goals you're setting and what your truest desires are, there is a part of you that knows that you are intentionally selling yourself short and trying to keep yourself from dreaming as big as you actually want to. So you're failing at your true dreams because you're rejecting them from the very beginning. You're choosing failure from the beginning, and part of you is constantly rejecting yourself. And I know that if you stop for a minute numbing out in your life, stop distracting yourself from it in your life, you would feel it. You would see it. And you would know that you are not living to your fullest potential. You're not allowing yourself to see the possibility of what would happen if you stretch the way you see the, the world, if you stretch the way you believe about what is possible for you. But like I said, you are free to choose this path for as long as you want to. I think you don't actually want to, though. You just have a story about why you maybe have to. And that, my friends, <laughs> that is where my particular brand of magic comes in as a coach. But anyways, I, <laughs> I digress here. So... Here is the thing about these kind of goals, these small goals that we already know how to do, we just and we know we can do them within a certain time limit. The truth the, the truth about these is, and the issue with these is, is that we have these big true desires, big dreams that we want to go after. And so many of us are taught to dismiss those dreams. We are taught to not see ourselves as being worth the time or effort to put in the in the work to take the actions to actualize these dreams in life. We've been taught to instead set small goals for ourselves for the sake of comfort or for the sake of immediate gratification. So that basically we can use this sort of temporary feeling of accomplishment as a way to numb the pain of our truest and biggest dreams being silently rejected in the background by, by yourself. You're doing this to yourself. And so many of you out there are doing this to yourself in your life. So many of you are just so busy trying to numb out with food, alcohol, shopping, television, social media, or the, the, the brief satisfaction of achieving small things that you already know how to do because you're constantly digging that internal wound deeper and deeper of the self-rejection of your truest desires. You are out there constantly rejecting your truest and biggest dreams and telling yourself that you're not good enough to go after them. But here's the thing. You are. You are good enough. And I know you are because you're dreaming them which means that you have what it takes in you to imagine the possibility and then get out there and find the how-to that makes that possibility your reality. And we're going to get to this how-to thing here in just a second and when we talk about the second side of this issue. But first, I want you to see this. This side here, this first side of the issue that I want you to see is if you are doing this to yourself here, are you setting these small goals that you know you can achieve and you know how you can achieve them and you know you can do them within a certain time limit? Are, do you find yourself doing this? My question to you is why are you selling yourself short here and missing out on what the actual point of goals is, which is to push you, to stretch you in the way that you think about what is possible for you, to rethink what is possible when you step outside there and take action on a goal where you have no idea yet how you're going to make it happen. But that's the point of the goal to find the how-to. So this brings me to the second side of the issue here. The other side of this is when you realize you're setting these small goals for yourself, and you're like, all right, fine, I'm going to set the big goal for me. I'm going to let myself see the big goal. I'm going to set it. I, I don't know my how-to, and I'm going to get out there 
And so you set the goal that's big enough for, your, big enough for yourself that it's going to stretch you to grow after you go after it or in the process of going after it. What I find here is that most people, after doing this, they set the goal, they make the whole point of the goal that they need to hurry up and achieve it so that they can feel better about themselves and their life. I know you guys catch yourself doing it, setting the goal, and then you get out there and you're like, oh my God, I have to find the fastest way possible to hurry up and get to this goal because I've got to achieve the results so I can feel better about myself and feel better about my life and show myself that I can do it. And in this scenario, again, you're putting conditions on your value, your worth, your ability to enjoy being yourself just as you are. And in this case, that condition that you're putting on yourself is that you have to get to a specific result and you have to get to it fast. Or you have to get to it the first time you try how to. So what do you end up doing? You end up just suffering and hating yourself and using your goal to beat yourself up and make yourself miserable during the journey of it. And maybe you even give up on the goal when, when the first how-to that you tried doesn't give you the result that you want. See, the problem here, my friends, is that most of you out there have the whole point of setting goals so confused. As a culture, we have it confused. We're so focused on the end result that we miss out on the joy of the process of the of, of setting and what the point is of setting the goal. We miss out on the joys of getting out there and creating the results in our life. The process of it, we brush over them, we diminish them, we don't see them entirely. All we look at is when we get to the result. And we're like, when we get there, that's when we feel good enough. That's the whole point of setting the goal. But the whole point of setting the goal isn't that. The whole point of setting the goal is, well, there are actually many of them. The, the joys that we get to experience in setting the goal have to do with having a higher quality of more open thinking to explore new possibility. We learn new skills along the way as a secondary result. We build problem-solving skills. We develop resilience. We learn, second, we learn secondary how-tos. We increase our capacity to delay gratification and therefore stop trying to numb ourselves out to constantly be comfortable in our life. We develop creativity in finding more solutions where we used to think that, that none existed. We strengthen our relationship with ourselves as we go and practice believing in ourselves and we keep showing up and finding ways forward even though, when the ways we're trying don't give us the result that we want. We show up again. We develop this skill to create how-tos where we used to think that a how-to didn't exist instead of just piggybacking off of someone else's how-to, off of someone else's possibility. We develop the ability to find and create how-tos that are just for us, that are our unique how-to. Because here's the thing, when we set a goal big enough for ourselves, big enough for ourselves that it's going to change our life, then guess what? It requires a how-to that doesn't exist yet. It doesn't exist in our current way of thinking. So we have to be willing to explore how-tos. We have to be willing to get out there and try how to figure out why it didn't give us the result that we want and then modify it and find a new how-to, add on some new things, explore areas that you've never explored before. But we see that as failure. But here's the thing, failure only happens when we choose to quit, and quitting only happens when we choose to stop looking for ways to create our unique how-to. And if we believe in ourselves enough, then we keep showing up. But when we don't, guess what? We believe that there was only one how-to. And then when we do it and we don't get the result we want, guess what? We quit and we choose to fail. But if we go at it with the energy that the how-to exists, we just have to find it. We have to create it for ourselves. Then getting an unexpected result is actually expected. And all it means is that we learned. We learned a how-to that doesn't work. And we learned what we can modify about it to make it work. Make it work differently the next time. Maybe get us a little bit closer to the goal. So yeah, we have these goals. And we're focused on the result. And what I'm here to say is, yeah, getting the result, yeah, that's cool. That's great. So what? So what? You'll achieve it. You'll celebrate it for a short time. That's not the magic of the goal, though. The magic of the goal is the journey. It is the finding the how-to. It is the stretching the brain to, to think in ways that you weren't thinking before, that you didn't allow yourself to think before, to believe in yourself in ways you didn't allow yourself to believe before, to expand your skills and try new how-tos, invent new how-tos, add how-tos together that no one's ever put together before and find a totally new possibility that is just for you. But all of that, 
happens in the process, not the result. And when we choose to set our goals with the goal being, the goal of the goal being to achieve the result, we miss out on all of that. We choose goals that are going to stretch us because working towards it gives us the opportunity to gain all of these benefits that I've talked about today. We gain these from the journey, not the result. And if our focus is solely on the result and getting to it as fast as possible, we miss out on the entire purpose of the goal. When you do this, you allow yourself to put conditions on your worth, so much so that you don't allow yourself to experience the true purpose of the goal, which is what we gain by being in the process of believing in ourselves to keep showing up and work and work and lean in and evolve and face our internal narratives of shame and rejection and then release those stories and keep stepping forward to learn more of what we're capable of when we release the belief of our old limiting dialogues surrounding shame and guilt and we create new how-tos to new possibility. The point of the goal is not conditional worth. It's not to hurry up and get to a result, otherwise we're not good enough. And so many of you all out there are out there setting, maybe you set a big goal and you're in this rush to get there. And so you find this how-to online in a book or something and you get out there and you try it and you don't get the result you want. And then you start using your goal to beat yourself up and feel bad about yourself and tell yourself why you shouldn't have tried, why you should just give up. There's no point. There's no point in this goal. And you convince yourself that your life is just so miserable and horrible now, but there's, you just have to hide from it. Because there's no point in going after your goals, you won't achieve it because you won't achieve it because look, you just tried this how-to and it didn't work. My friends, that is not the point of goals. The point of goals is not to make ourselves miserable. It's not to compare ourselves to other people. It's not so that when we get there, when we achieve the result, we're gonna finally feel better in our life. Because guess what? Here's the thing. When you do achieve the result, sure, there'll be a temporary hit of gratification, some comfort from that and whatnot. And, but guess what? After that, your life is still going to be 50-50. I think a lot of us believe that when we go after our goals, we're going to hit the goal. And then all of a sudden, life is just going to be this no more problems. Everything's going to be easier for us. But guess what? It, it, that's not how it works. We reach our goals and our life still is 50-50, 50% of things that we're going to struggle with, 50% of things that we don't struggle with. Life doesn't reach a magical point of no problems or only easier problems. My friends, problems are problems. And I know some of you all out there believe other people have easier problems in their life than you or that yours are just harder than theirs. Or that if you were in their life, that the problems that they have would be just so much easier for you. But here's the thing. If you are in their life, the problems that they focus on that feel tough for them, though, sure, those might feel easy for you, but then you get in their life and you recognize where their skill set has evolved and kept problems at bay that you won't be able to keep at bay, that for them were just easy. They could ease through those. And the problems they were focusing on that were difficult for them, you can ease through those. But then you've got a whole new set of problems. It's still 50-50. So my friends, nobody's problems are easier than yours. And you will never reach a point in life in which your problems are easy. That's not the point of goals. Stop believing that the point of achieving goals is to achieve a life that is easier for you. That's not the point. And hurrying up and getting to the goal isn't the point. That's not the point of the goal. It's the growth that happens during the process. And setting the goal pulls you towards this possibility that you don't yet see how is possible for you. And in that process of pulling yourself towards that, you push yourself and pull yourself through these obstacles that are going to grow you, expand you, and evolve you to be the badass that you're going to be. But you don't get there by rushing through easy processes to get to a goal that you already know how to achieve. You get there by pushing yourself to goals that you don't know how you're going to achieve. And you don't know the how-to. And you're going to try a how-to and it's not going to work. And then you're going to try another one and it's not going to work. And you're going to try another one and it's not going to work. And you're going to keep showing up. And every time you try a how-to and it doesn't work, you learn something. You grow a skill. That's the point of the goal. Not to achieve it. And sure, we can achieve it. And I know that some of you all are out there thinking, well, if achievement isn't the point, then people won't work towards their goals. But this is that's just a story that we're told. That is not the truth of it. The truth is, when we see that the point isn't about achievement, it's about growth, it's about evolution. When the point is to step up to the plate and get a different result than we, than we want, 
and then we feel the internal dialogue of rejection and shame. When we see that as being the point, we become unstoppable at showing up. We don't give up. We don't become lazy. We become unstoppable because we see that's the point. Stepping up, learning to process my own shame, my own rejection from my internal dialogue. Learning to face that and look at it and be like, you don't have to be true. And I can show you you don't have to be true because I'm going to find, I'm going to find the how-to in my life that proves you don't have to be true. And process that rejection, process that shame, step back up to the plate and do it again. When we're willing, when we see that that is the point of the goal, to pull us through those experiences so that we become the fullest version of ourselves, the most fearless version of ourselves because we're so, we're so ready to show up for our fears. We're so ready to show up for them and choose them because we know they're going to pull us into pulling the the part out of us that we're afraid isn't able to show up in this life. We're going to find them and pull them out. When that becomes the point of the goal, not achievement, we don't not work harder. We work harder and we become unstoppable in showing up. We become unstoppable because fear is no longer, rejection is no longer, and shame is no longer an indication to stop. But that's the story that so many of us have about our goals. We show up, we try how to, we don't get the result we want, we feel, we feel guilt, we feel shame, we feel fear, we feel, you know, rejection, and then we're like, oh, I must have done something wrong, this is so bad, I've got to give up, this isn't, this isn't good, you know, I, I must have not done this right, and you, obviously I'm not good enough to do this, and then what do we do? We give up. We give up. We choose failure. And then we go into these numbing behaviors of eating, drinking, televisioning, social media, whatever, to numb ourselves out from the fact that we are giving up on our dream, our goal, and telling ourselves, no, it's not worth it to show up. No, it's not worth it to show up and face that internal dialogue that you have that's creating the feeling of guilt and shame, that's creating the feeling of rejection, to face it and look at it in the face and say, you know what, I get why you're here, I get why I created you, but guess what, you don't have to be true. And you find out why. You step forward and you find out why it doesn't have to be true for you. My friends, that is the point of setting goals. And when you can see that, when you can show up for that, when you can know that and continue showing up for yourself, then you become unstoppable. You become willing to do work at a level that people are not usually willing to do work. And we're taught to see it that, no, we have to make the point of it achievement. Otherwise, we won't be, we won't be willing to show up and do the work. No, my friends, it's the exact opposite. So many of you out there are playing so small and not doing the work that you're capable of. Not doing the work that that, that you could pull from yourself if you really saw your full potential and enjoy doing it. And you're not doing it because you're not letting yourself dream big enough and you're making the point of dreaming be about achievement. So many of you out there that are worried that if you don't make your dream about achievement that you won't put in the work, guess what? You're already not putting in the work. You're selling yourself short right now, sitting small in your life, hiding hiding behind walls, hiding behind barriers of of jobs you don't even really want to be in because you're afraid to dream of the job that you actually want to be in and do what it would take to go after that job and do it unstoppably even when you face rejection one, two, three, four, five, ten, a hundred times. It doesn't matter because you're on your way to finding your how-to. That, my friends, is what makes you unstoppable. That's what makes you show up and put in the effing work, my friends. It's not about being achievement-based. And I know we're taught to believe that it's achievement-based, but it's not true. This is what keeps you playing small. My friends, people don't not achieve their goals because they lack drive. They don't quit because they aren't achieving fast enough. They quit because of the story they tell themselves when they get a different result than expected. And then they go into their dialogue of shame. They go into their dialogue of rejection and they make it mean that they need to quit. And then they quit because of the suffering that they create for themselves when they beat themselves up with their own goal because the point of it was to achieve it. Not to get in there and fall on your face and pick yourself back up and learn from it because that was the point of trying, not getting the result. It was to learn how you can show up for yourself, to learn a new skill, to learn a a how-to that doesn't work so you can try a different one or modify it. So many of you give up because of your belief that the whole point of the goal is to get to the result and get there as fast as possible. And since your how-to didn't work, then you give up on the goal. This is a huge part of why so many of you out there are not going after your goals unstoppably. 
It has to do with what you think about the point of the goal is. But it also ties back to a lot of authenticity and goal setting and a lack of a clear vision and tying this back to your core value sensitivities and life purpose. It all goes back to that. But you can have all of that. All of this is the very base of it. But even when we have that straight, even when we get emotional responsibility into practice in our life, if we go after our big goals with the idea that the point is to be able to quickly achieve them, that the point is the achievement, and that that's when we get to feel good about ourselves, that's when we get to enjoy life, that's what makes our life easier. When we go after goals that way, then guess what? We miss out on the point of setting goals in the first place. We are setting ourselves up to give up on the goal and to choose failure when one or two or ten how-tos that we've tried don't give us the result that we want. Instead of continuing to show up and be like, yeah, that was the point. That's why I showed up, to get that rejection so I can learn from it. And then we tell ourselves when we, get, we try these one, two, or ten how-tos that and we get a result that we want, we tell ourselves that we've used up all of our how-tos. There are no more left, and we failed at the goal, so we give up. But guess what? There's only one way to use up every single how-to for you, and you want to know what it is? It's when you find the one that creates the result. Everything else is just choosing to fail. The only way you have used up every how-to that could work for you is when you find the one that gives you the result. Everything else is you choosing to fail. I want you to let that sink in. When you find the one that gives you the result, that's when you know you've tried every possible how-to for you. And I know some of you out there think, okay, well, then I get to that point. You achieve your goal. You celebrate as you do through you know every achievement along the way. That's the other point. So many of us are missing out on the celebrations we could be celebrating along the way of our journey because we're like, no, 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 I can't celebrate until I get here. But yeah, so we get to the result. But here's the thing. A lot of you out there believe that once we get to the result, that's the end point. But guess what? This is why I say achievement is not the, the, the goal of the result. Because once you achieve it, yeah, you celebrate for a short time. And then guess what? You're on to the next big goal. Because the point of the goal wasn't achievement. It was to push yourself to think differently, to grow and keep looking for more possibility and how you're going to make it possible in your life to show up with your fullest potential and use this life. Use this life. Everyone always wants to use YOLO as a reason why to lay back and chill and relax and play small. And I'm like, no, you only live once and that life is short. Why are you not using it to see what you're capable of? And that's why setting goals isn't about achievement, because once you see what's possible for you, when you achieve that big goal, guess what? You're like, guess what? I only believe this is possible right now because of my current beliefs. And I just started off with this belief back here, and I didn't believe getting here was possible, but I'm here now. So I wonder what's possible if I keep exploring. So we set another goal. We get back out there. And we set the goal because it gives us a direction to pull ourselves through the obstacles that are going to challenge us to show up as the versions of ourselves that we are when we fully show up. And I'm not sure if we can fully show up in this human body, but I want to find out how much of the badass that I know I am inside is able to come out in this human body. My goal in this life is to use this YOLO, this short life that I get, to find out just how much of that amazingness that I feel inside of me that I know is me, how much of that I can pull out into this world. How much of it can I show up for myself and keep saying, yeah, that didn't give me the result I want. That's okay. I learned from it. I add on, I modify, and I keep showing up because I know that there is this potential in me that is meant to come out. And I am learning now how to pull it out by pulling myself towards this goal that I don't know yet. I don't know yet how it's possible, but I'll know when I do it. That's the point of goals, my friends. And so many of you out there are giving up on even creating big goals for yourself. Most of you think it's because you just don't want anything out of life. Or you just want to get by and be comfortable. You know, YOLO. (laughs) Turn that around. YOLO is not an argument to just be comfortable in life. You can believe that for as long as you want. But the moment that you're ready to notice that voice inside of you, that you're you're trying to drown out with comfort of food, television, social media, sex, pornography, shopping, alcohol, what drugs, whatever it is that you're using, the moment that you're ready to notice the exciting things that that voice wants you to set your goals for, 
and then step into all of the lessons and obstacles and growth opportunities and uncomfortable teaching, teachable emotions and new ways of thinking that are going to pull you towards bringing the most badass version of you out. When you are ready to see that goal that is going to pull you forward in life through all of that experience, which is the human experience that we are designed for, when you're ready to notice that voice and really listen to it, then let me, let me tell you, whatever that dream is, it's going to be huge. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be magnificent. And it is possible for you. And I'm here to guide any of you into figuring out your how-to and make you unstoppable in figuring out that how-to. That's what I've got for you guys. That's what I've got for you today, my friends. We've got the whole point of goal setting so confused. And I want us to turn it over on its head. And I want to see all of you become the unstoppable badasses that I know you are on the inside. That's what I want you to get out of today, my friends. I hope this cleared up some stuff for you. I know my social media was a little bit vague and maybe a bit confusing for some of you all. If you follow me, follow me on Instagram or Facebook, I hope this episode clears up a bit what I was talking about in those posts. For those of you who don't follow me on social media, the links are in the, in the show notes. You can follow me there. But also, I hope this episode brought some clarity to some of you out there of why it is that you feel so stuck in setting your goals. You feel so stuck in giving up on your goals. Because a lot of it probably has to do with your story that you're telling yourself about what the point of setting the goal is in the first place. So my friends, I want you to get out there. I want you to dream big. It is literally what you are designed for. And I want you to realize that the point of setting this goal is the growth. The point of setting this goal is to pull you into being the person that is in that dream because it is inside of you. And all you're doing is pulling it out. You're remembering how you did it. All right, so get out there, dream big, my friends. It is what you are designed for. I love you all, and until we meet again here next week, ciao. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the content of this podcast. If you did, please subscribe so that you're one of the first people to know when I release a new episode each week. If you have any questions or if you have interest in learning more about the coaching that I do with my clients one-on-one, -on -one, then just head over to my website at www.lifecoachseth.com. Dot com. That's www.lifecoachseth.com. There you're going to have the ability to reach out to me for questions that you might have or to book your free discovery call with me to discuss what one-on-one -on -one coaching with me might be like for you. You can also check out and order your copy of my book to get a taste of what I'm all about as a person and as a coach. I'm so happy that you joined us today and I hope to have you here again next week. So until then, let authenticity be the guide to your most unstoppable and fulfilling journey of life.